Aquarius, this is your week ahead astrology forecast by Astrology Motivation from Born Without Boundaries. In this video, every single week, we review the major planetary aspects and transits and how they impact your natal sun. Or better yet, how they interact with your natal sun and what that means for your day to day and your bottom line. I'm going to start really broad with the big things and, and like the stuff that everybody's going to be impacted by. And then I will focus down onto uh, Aquarius specific information. And then I'll break things down into the decans, which is a group of 10 degrees. And your natal suns will fall somewhere within the three decans that are in Aquarius. And that'll help me understand how your natal suns are being impacted by each of the planets that they're interacting with this week. You'll see that not all of you are going to be impacted the same way. In fact, there could be very huge differences between how you're being impacted. So come along with me all you need to enjoy this information and be able to really understand it is to know your birth date that's all you need to know I will translate the birth dates into the correlating degrees so that you will know exactly who I'm talking about now if you want to get real specific then pull out your natal chart or go grab yourself one um, they're easy they're free you can get them online just just search free natal chart or free birth chart you need your birth date which you already have your birth time and your birth location and then with that information it'll spit out a natal chart for you in a couple of seconds so right now though you don't need that all you need to know is when you were born and we'll jump right in this is a pretty big week it goes from July 5th through the 11th it is a very contentious week and when I say pretty big I mean kind I mean huge because there's a lot of tension that's building in the air and it's a lot of malefic energy bumping up against each other as well as everything else and it I know just the word itself it is difficult to deal with energy it is very contentious and a lot of this energy that starts this week actually is gonna last through the beginning of August so it's not gonna go away really quickly we're clashing with laws rules regulations authority Saturn is clashing a lot this week and into next week and the next couple of weeks first with Mars then with Mercury then with the Sun Pluto is going to be once again in opposition to different planets um, Mercury this week we'll get into all the specifics but it creates a very tense and high energy week that could be very very combustible so and it's especially going to impact you guys because one of your ruling dignitaries your traditional ruling dignitary is Saturn so even though Uranus is your modern ruler what's what's going on with Saturn is still going to impact y'all so you should really understand what's going on with it so let's get into it Aquarius the big things lots going on this week there are two major transits one happens on the 10th of july mars moves into virgo this is especially impactful because of saturn's interaction with mars mars moving into virgo is very pedantic almost facetious energy it really loves to have everything scheduled and everything predictable and everything all sorted out and when something goes wrong it's easy to freak it out so this this energy can be very volatile in and of itself but then we also have on the 11th the next day mercury transiting into leo this is very blunt energy it's very open energy it's very to the point straightforward confident energy um sometimes it yeah you know i'm just gonna say it's very confident energy it's also the energy of aha the light bulb goes on understanding something comprehending something and speaking about it saying about it so it could very well be all about expose especially since mercury is going to be by the seventh square to pluto so mercury is going to be square to pluto before it transits into leo on the 11th but when it transits into leo it's still going to be square to pluto and that's really like things coming out coming out like stuff that we tried to hide stuff that needed to be investigated and explored coming up coming to the surface almost like um the expose that kind of energy so that could be really really huge this whole week not this whole week but from the 7th on from the 7th through the 11th because mercury and pluto by the 7th will be in opposition to each other there's a grand square in the sky between the nodes and mercury and pluto that makes for really 
um, almost like implosive energy with just, I got to get it out. Information has to come out and it's going to break itself apart at its core in order to get it out. This could be tide turning, corner turning, life changing sort of revelations that are coming out. We also have um, Pluto trying to Uranus throughout all of this, which means uh, the, it's like the it's like the awkward and the hidden are coming together to harmonize they want to be seen they want to be known they want to appear they want to be present um they're not gonna they're 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 almost like coming coming to terms with themselves um this sense of surprise surprise changes surprise twists very interesting we have um by the 10th this is this is big saturn opposite mars now mars is headed into virgo so right before on the ninth is really when they kind of are in, in opposition to each other but mars moves into virgo on the 10th this makes it so mars opposite virgo is already contentious it's very almost pugilistic it's because it's it's like its ego is easily bruised. It's quick to anger. It's quick to um, feel like it's being held back and resent that it's being held back and get very resentful because it's being too restricted or too constrained. And then Mars goes into Virgo and I think that makes it actually worse rather than better because now it like expects all these things to be in line and be in order and it almost in some ways becomes possessed with that Saturnian energy and it frustrates everybody outwardly even more. So there is just this tough energy that's coming between Saturn and Mars by the 10th um, we also have um, still in the sky Venus conjunct Mars all week long even while Mars moves into Virgo there is that conjunction which is very sexual energy with Pluto trying to Uranus and Mars going into Virgo there could be just stuff coming out that people would rather stay hidden or rather stay like secretive um, but there's too much energy around it. This kind of sense of trying to maybe keep something hidden that's ready to come out or ready to be talked about. <sighs> Big energy. And then, we, I mean, it's, all, it's exhausting just talking about it. And then we have um, Venus all week long is square to Uranus, which is all about sort of rebelling against what you're normally attracted to what normally turns you on so you could get into some sort of powerful sexual relationships this week that you'd rather keep private and you'd rather keep hidden or that could be what actually is exposed and comes out especially when mercury ends up transiting into leo so pretty big big week right now let's move into aquarius specific information for aquarius specific information i look to what's going on in the zodiac sign of aquarius and then i look to ruling dignitaries which for you guys is your modern ruler uranus and your traditional ruler saturn now saturn is extremely active this week we've already reviewed a lot of it it's square to mars by the 10th it's semi square to chiron the whole freaking week and it stays that way for a while so there's just this sense of constant resistance that's making you feel like you're just inadequate like you can't get things done like like why are things so difficult why are things so hard it's like it's almost like it's gonna bust everybody's balls and and in doing so create a sense of pessimism that is just like well it, is it not working because I'm not good enough like what's going on everything can get very frustrating in this energy because you don't want to make the same mistakes but at the same time it feels like it feels like no matter what you do it is a mistake and so it can very much discourage trying to try something new which could keep us stuck or hold us back fear of not being good enough and of being vulnerable feeling that we're not being a Effective could keep us stuck and not wanting to try anything different because we're exhausted it's nothing's working and when there's this um, opposition to Mars now it becomes uh, the basis for resentment and contention so this could be a very very tough week uh, going into this energy um, for you guys um, 
by Saturday, I said I, I said Mars goes into Virgo, which I think will actually make things even worse. FYI. Now, what is Uranus doing? Uranus all week long. Oh no, 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 by the tenth, Uranus is sextile to the Sun, which means that there is a sense of ingenuity and um, like ingenuity and maybe even genius breakthrough that comes through. Um, also a sense of oddities coming to light and sort of taking over and taking center stage. We have uh, Uranus square to Venus all week long, which means surprising love interests, surprising love affairs, um, love affairs that keep you off track or throw you off track or make you rebel against your current love affair. Um, just those kind of like oddball decisions that you could regret later on. Even if you don't regret them, they could just open you up to new experiences, but they won't last past the aspect. They don't tend to last long. Um, and then Uranus is also between the 4th and the 9th of this week, sextile to Mercury, which means, yeah, there's huge breakthroughs in mental capacities as well as communications or being able to articulate very difficult to comprehend ideas or um, like technological breakthroughs even. So, oh my God. <laughs> I mean, my head is kind of spitting from this week. In Aquarius, there's not a lot of things going on in it specifically in Aquarius. There's not any major, any, any major planets or luminaries there. Um, but everything around it is big enough. Let's put it this way. So let's head into, let's head into the decans, shall we? So if your natal sun is located between zero and nine degrees, it's located in the first decan of Aquarius and your Aquarian one. For birthdays, this translates to January Aquarians. So those of you who have your birthday on the Capricorn cusp, so definitely the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, all the way up through the 31st, you guys would be Aquarius ones. You, the guys who are right on the cusp, so around the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, you are still conjunct Pluto and you will be conjunct Pluto for the next couple of years, even though Pluto retrograded back into Capricorn. Still conjunct Pluto, which means there's a real formidability about your character and a huge change. Changes are really going to, you're going to feel your life deconstruct to reconstruct again. This is really sort of a butterfly metamorphic period in your life right now. You could also be the conduit for change in other people's life. Um, but also just all around you, the aura of formidability. That's long term. We've spoken about this before. If you're on the cusp this week, by the 8th of this week, your natal suns are going to be opposite Mercury. So that's all, like, do not sign any important paperwork, give any important presentations for the next couple of days afterward. Ultimately, guys, that's going to just screw you up in terms of how you communicate, how you perceive people communicating with you. Um, things will break down, emails won't get sent. It's almost like your own mini Mercury retrograde. There's just opposition there that could really kind of trip you up a lot this week. FYI, um, and since Mercury is heading into Leo on the 11th, everybody will see it. It won't be, you won't be able to hide it. So just, just be wary of that energy. You also have, especially if your birthday is around the first or second, a square to Jupiter, which is going to make you want to rush things. It's going to make you feel like you already deserve what you don't have. It's going to make you want to grow too fast. And that could also really mess you up by the 8th especially for those of you born around the first or second who you're not reading things quick you're reading things too quickly you want things to happen too quickly you're not paying attention you miss stuff you skip stuff and that could really mess you up especially on important stuff so i think the key to success this week is to slow it down count to 10 before you respond to anybody and stay away from these grandiose expectations and just think yes it's important to know what you deserve but also things are going to move more slowly this week there's a lot of impediments don't take that personally or try to push it along too fast fyi okay aquarius twos so this is for those of you whose natal sun is between 10 and 19 degrees aquarius 
you're in the second decan of Aquarius so your Aquarius twos um, that correlates to anybody who's born February 1st to the 10th essentially is Aquarius two um, your natal sons um, I'm sorry I apologize your natal sons uh, especially if you're born around the first or second we already went through this is our square to Jupiter um, Oh, I'm sorry, that means the Aquarius ones, if your natal suns are born around the 30th or 31st, then you are square, you're in a square to Jupiter. But same thing goes. For those of you in, Aqu in Decan 2, Aquarius 2s, if you're born around the 1st or 2nd, your natal suns are square to Jupiter. Same thing, wanting to push things forward too quickly, move too quickly. It, it is associated with confidence. It is associated with optimism. But it could just cause challenges because it wants to grow too fast. So just an FYI, there is also a quincunx to the sun all week long, which means there's unnerving or frustrating rubs against your ego right a sense of once again especially with that square to Jupiter expecting too much too quickly um, expecting things to happen bigger than they should have been and then kind of missing the quality that they are in front of them right so expectations could really trip you up this week FYI we also have if you guys were born around the 9th or 10th a square to Uranus so it's a square to your own ruling dignitary this sense of sort of 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 feeling like you need to rebel at all times and this frustrating feeling of I'm just frustrated with everything that's normal to me this could cause a lot of challenges in your life this week so once again there's this energy of take a breath before you make a decision count to 10 slow things down you're not going to want to but you are going to need to um, and then by the 10th on the t uh, so all of you um, your natal suns are sextile to Chiron, especially those of you born around the 9th, 10th. You're in a real tight conjunction with Chiron. Um, not a tight conjunction, tight sextile with Chiron. Um, but all of you are in a sextile to Chiron, which means you're driven to heal past traumas or you're driven to, to open up opportunities for yourself through what you've experienced. Because of what you've experienced, you want to heal, you want to help others. This is a major sort of theme in your life right now, since last year into the next year. Um, but on the 10th, <clears throat> on the 10th, the moon conjuncts Chiron, which will make it a particularly emotional day. That could either kind of make you more implosive or more explosive because you're so much more powerfully driven to do something. It's just something very emotional. Could be a very rewarding experience since it is going to be sextile to your natal sun. This sense of really feeling this powerful, overwhelming, fulfilling emotions that come from um, um, being inspired and find and and being inspired to act upon the trauma that you've experienced not act upon but being inspired by the trauma that you've experienced to to open opportunities for yourself so so what i'm saying is when the moon conjuncts chiron it's going to be an extra emotional day for you on the 10th whether it's good or bad emotions i don't know but definitely it's going to feel deeper feel richer and feel thicker um, on that day um, all right, let's go to Aquarius threes. So if your natal sun is somewhere between uh, 20 and 29 degrees Aquarius, you are Aquarius threes because it's in the third decan of Aquarius. So <clears throat> those of you who, the correlating birthdays are those of you who have your birthdays between say the 11th and the 20th i'm not sure that that uh aquarius season goes all the way to the 21st usually pisces season um starts a little early because february is a short end of month but all the way up through that pisces cusp would be you guys um okay so um your natal suns are in opposition to the venus mars conjunction so there is definitely contention there when it comes to your sexual desires and you even your sexual partnerships and the fact that venus is square to uranus and your natal suns are also going to be square to uranus all freaking week long means that there can be some issues arising with wanting to step outside of your relationship or issues arising because somebody did 
because it's like you're just craving you're just craving something different not everybody's going to step outside their relationship but ultimately it could also mean that you're just bored and you're finding real weird a weird boredom with your current situation that you want to go away but you can't make go away it's just part of what's going on now allow venus to pass on allow mars to pass on and you'll be out of it for the next week but for the next week there could be some major challenges that arise in those themes we also have um a quincunx to mercury um by the 6th of july so once again communications could trip you up and definitely communications tripping you up a square to venus and opposition between the venus mars conjunction this could really start to degrade or have you misinterpret a lot of stuff that's going on when it comes to your intimate partnerships so this is just an fyi it's going to be hard and difficult but um this week is going to be extra strenuous when it comes to those relationships with the quincunx to mercury there is that sense of everything in your life there could be miscommunications or frustrating communications or stuff that you didn't want to hear or, or information you didn't want to have to deal with could also just be things don't like things like like a mercury retrograde things don't go through the way that you wanted them to um your brain and your mouth don't connect in sync it's not a great time for any kind of important tests or any kind of important interviews or anything like that definitely don't sign paperwork right now but ultimately this is going to really challenge how um, good you are at communicating your feelings as well as self-control even FYI so you guys let me know in the comments below just how this energy is impacting you because it is really challenging not gonna lie please remember to subscribe to this channel and come on over to born without boundaries tarot for your week ahead tarot card reading i love you guys happy fourth of july if you're in the states and i'll see you guys next week